Sheila Curran is a fine art painter who hopes her art will help you connect with yourself and bring vitality into your life. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with Sheila for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Sheila Curran. <laughs> yes, Quentin. Welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you. This is very special. Thank oh, you. You're welcome. You are a special person because obviously you are a well-renowned fine art painter. I'm a fine art painter. The well-renowned is questionable. <laughs> <laughs> to. <laughs> what is fine art these days? Oh my gosh, you threw that right out of the chute. <laughs> um, well, to me, fine art is something that um, represents the level of quality in material and in procedure and in um, accomplishment of the piece. So, that's my version of fine art. I know it. I know that on your website you said this, connect with yourself in a vitality of life. Bring beauty and vibrancy into your home. Yes. How do you connect with yourself and use the vitality of life to really create art? Well, connecting with yourself is, okay, so I'll bring it back to me. Sure. So connecting with myself has been pretty much the driving force in my life and who am I and how you connect and what does that mean and what's the world in the bigger picture um, and that's how I, I've traveled so many places and lived so many different places um, always seeking for that answer and um, so connecting with yourself is I guess recognizing who you are or maybe recognizing who you want to be and, and finding that path of feeling good and connecting with that. Um, the vitality part is when I'm creating pieces, I put that vitality into the work. Um, I use a lot of vibrant colors, a lot of high quality material, and just feeling what that vitality is in different symbols or images on canvas. On canvas. Do you look at yourself as as you remember many years ago, the secret. Oh yeah. Is that how you approach art? I actually was very into the secret when it first came out. I was living in Paris. Oh yeah. Um, so to me, even before the secret came out, I understood the, not it's a concept of perspective of creating your own world. So uh, yes, so I want to create my own world. Well, what is the world I want to create? This is the world I want to create, a world that feels good for me. And then other people have said that my work also helps them feel good in their spaces. Mm -hmm. um, am I answering your question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> question is about the secret. Oh, that's um, yeah, because uh, so the world is a really like, crazy place and um, really, really, really crazy, especially in these days, it seems more crazy than normal. And um, so the world can be falling down, but it doesn't have to fall down on you. Mm -hmm. So you create a world where that's not happening whether it's in your own home or in your own in your, in your inner self. Yeah. Am, I, am I being too high for Oh, no, no, you got <laughs> that actual idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think he asked that question. All right. Now, my next question is this. You talk about, obviously, the craziness in this world, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at some of your paintings here, which are phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. If you could draw the world right now in art, where would you start? Well, I am doing that. <laughs> That's the world I, I, I recognize, the world of beauty and order and reason and connection and love and feeling good and um, being vibrant. So that world, when I'm saying the world is a crazy place, because there is a lot of art that is very discordant and reflects all that craziness, and that's there, and I don't know, I mean, to me, I don't, know why an artist would paint that. I mean, other than if you have personal anger and you want to paint something that's angry and it's like, gets it out of your system, right? <laughs> but why would anybody want to buy that? Like, why would you put that on your wall? Why don't you just get an angry cat into your home, <laughs> you know, that claws your legs every time you turn a corner? I don't understand why you want something ugly and discordant in your house. So, I mean, that world, and it's funny because um, Charlie James, my husband, right. my WT mate, right. he's always talking about every day on his show, you know, he's talking about the craziness sure. and oh, yeah. the politics and the craziness. Right. And, and so that's a world I know, 
I mean, he brings that world here, but <laughs> hopefully this stuff calms him down, it calms us both down. Yeah, this is very crazy out there. Oh, I bet it is. Yes, indeed. <laughs> You talk obviously about Charlie James, uh -huh. and obviously he is a radio DJ and an entrepreneur as well. And I'm wondering, how does Sheila Curran meet him? <laughs> um, well, I came back from Europe um, in 2010 after being there for 18 years, and I settled in Savannah. And uh, I'd never been to Savannah, but I wanted to live somewhere pretty. Yes. Because I was in Paris, it has to be pretty. Right. <laughs> or I'm not happy. So I was there about a year, and I actually met him on Match.com. So this, he came to Savannah and we had our first date. So yeah. the second date I had was the first time I came to Charleston. And I said, this is a pretty place. So I ended up moving here and we got married about four years ago. So wow. that's how we met. We met through the internet. Wow, amazing. Yeah. You talk about Charleston, how pretty this particular city is. How do you draw this? How do I draw it? Yes, ma'am, Charleston. Um, I don't really do scenes at Charleston. I actually never... I might do one scene of where I've lived in my life, but I don't do scenes of where I live. And, you know, people say, why don't you do scenes where you live? And I, I don't have an answer to that other than it's not, it doesn't, it's not what I'm about. Just recording what I see around me physically, to me, is just kind of like a draftsmanship. I'm not saying that's not pretty, that people do a lot of that in art in Austin. But I want to do something that has more impact or meaning to people personally. What has an impact to a lot of people these days in your mind? What has impact? You mean in art? Yes, ma'am. Well, again, it depends on what perspective you want to live in. I hope, I hope beauty has impact, and but also, you know, discordant and art, ugly things also have an impact. So mm -hmm. I guess it's whatever you want to look at. I mean, art traditionally reflects what's going on at the time. So it does give information, it is a way of conveying information of what is happening in the world and happening with people. Um, hopefully, but again, it's what you want to what you want to concentrate on. It's the secret, right? What you put your attention on, right. what you want to put your attention on. Right. <laughs> I feel good or I feel rotten. Mm -hmm. So I want to support stuff that makes me feel good and not feel rotten. What else do you support these days when it comes to the arts? When it comes to the arts? Yes, ma'am. Um, what do I do? Or oh, yeah. you, oh, and you know, how well she would ex articulate in a particular art setting? Uh, I don't know. I like to dance. Um, uh, I enjoy theater. Um, I don't know how else to answer that question. Oh, no worries. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, talk to me about art in the future. What is that like in your mind? Well, to me, it's, I think it's the same as it is now. But I mean, okay, so if you go look at art in the past, would be a good prediction of what art will be in the future. Um, and the same applied even in the Renaissance of um, painting things of a higher nature and putting symbolism in about what the truth is of existence and um, people's world and what people are striving for. Um, and I think that'll still be the same in the future. I don't see, because we went through so many um, phases in art, you know, modern art, impressionism, abstract, right. Right. all that kind of stuff, which at the time was new, so it was kind of cutting edge. But it's, you know, what goes out comes back in, so it obsolesces and comes back and retreats, and then you're back to what I do, which is very realistic you know, fine art on canvas. So, I mean, I like, actually, and some of the few things I put in are from old Renaissance paintings, and, you know, I give homage to Michelangelo and things like that, yeah. so. Um, so that's, I guess that's how I see the future, kind of continuing what's happening now, and whatever you want personally to connect with will still be there. Yeah. Well, Sheila Curran, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this and welcome thank to Winter Sense Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime.